The council pays for four police officers within the neighbourhood support team, ably supported by Kevin, who's the police sergeant. And what the council's really keen that they focus on is the longer term problem solving that sometimes safer neighbourhood teams don't have the resources or the time to be able to do. We work closely with the safer neighbourhood teams, the borough intelligence unit at Islington Police Station and the local communities in the Magpie teams. A representative from my team will sit with uh, and on all the Magpie meetings and, uh, and take information from the residents. Where there are problems with drug addresses, for example, that it's not just about carrying out a raid, kicking in the doors and walking away. What we want is a long-term solution to that problem. We'll look as quickly as possible to find out what that problem is and come up with a range of activities um, or solution, possible solutions to see what's best. But also we support the, the, the occupants. We offer um, support in, in terms of outreach, uh, we liaise closely with housing, uh, with drug support workers, um, and mental health workers, social workers, whatever is required to provide the support um, to the individuals. Since the neighbourhood support team has been in operation in uh, September 2011, so far we've executed 60 search warrants, closed 20 premises, 10 of which have been through crack house closure orders. We've had 150 arrests, seized approximately £50,000 street value drugs and around about £30,000 in cash which is believed to be uh, from crime related incidents. The Islington um, Community Alcohol Partnership uh, or CAP as it's called is, uh, is a relative new way of looking at the problem with underage sales and uh, young people getting access to alcohol. It's a multi-agency project really um, that combines local traders, youth workers, lots of other multi-agency groups to, to, to look at alcohol awareness in the borough. We go to wherever young people are, so it could be on estates, under stairwells, it could be in parks, it could be in cafes, and basically we engage them and we look at areas of work that might be interesting to them. So some of the work that Clive and his team did was looking at the risks that they take when young people are drinking, the looking after their emotional well-being. Um, we devised lots of questionnaires and surveys that the young people could take part in. We used music as a tool to engage them where um, they wrote some lyrics. We used film. There was lots of different ways of how we engage young people. And we just wanted to really see their attitudes and behaviour and see if we could um, just raise their awareness and, and also let them know where, what services they could go and use for themselves and for their families really. There was some training that was done with some of the local uh, shopkeepers and the vendors and um, they found that very very useful I and mean, the feedback that we got from them was that they, they found it very informative. The training helped us in, uh, in terms of being able to make sure that anybody who looks under 25, irrespective if they're 18, 19 or 20, to ask for ID immediately. Now that was one of the valuable points we've learned from the CAP and the training sessions. Yeah, we feel that this scheme has helped young people understand that they don't have to uh, get ac access to alcohol to have a good time. Um, and we also feel that retailers are much more confident now in challenging young people when they come into the premises and uh, for also, also challenging adults who may be buying alcohol on their behalf. This particular area where we're standing at the moment is the Bemerton Estate and the Bemerton has a street gang made up mainly of young people under the age of about 19. We've done a lot of work with the uh, detached youth services in here, engaging with the young people, diverting them away from antisocial behaviour and also gang-based activity. We do a lot of work with gangs in Islington, starting from early intervention and prevention work in schools. Um, with young people already involved in gangs, we have our serious youth violence and gangs team that based in the youth offending service and targeted youth support, and they work with individuals at risk and also with groups and do group work around knife crime in particular. The council has allocated new funding to address this and we are creating a new gangs team to work with 18 to 24 as we see that as a gap in our provision at the moment. We also have some new funding from the Home Office Ending Gangs and also Department of Health to do some work around mental health because that's an issue for some of the young people involved. We've got engagement officers who are going out and talking to young people and including their parents so that we can work together with the families uh, from a partnership basis. Another area will be positive activities and to increase access to 
um, diversionary activities, be it sport or arts or any other things the young people might be interested in. We also have our bronze group, which is our multi-agency gang prevention panel that work with the young people most at risk of perpetrating gang violence. And that group meets to actually reduce the risk and manage action plans for those young people. Well, if we talk about the Bemerton estate here, we've got a lot of really good positive feedback from the ward panels and from the local residents as to how, and I dread to say the word quiet, it has become and the fact that a lot of the young people now are ceasing their activity. The IOM is a programme, it's a partnership lib programme that utilises the services of probation, police, prison, town hall and third sector agencies. I became involved with the IOM because I am the senior programmes coordinator for Bounce Back, which is both a charity and a community interest company, providing painting and decorating services with ex-offenders. We work with anyone over the age of 18 who is a, a problematic, challenging offender, from uh, shoplifting all the way through to smashing grabbers. We target those offenders who have been 10 times through Tolpada Street Police Station in a 12-month period, two times prison, through prison custody in a 12-month period, or actually reach the threshold of risk that we need to actually look at and, and need to be challenged. The offenders um, benefit from being in the Bounce Back project primarily because they're upskilled and um, they get their MVQ2 in painting and decorating. They also work towards their CSCS training um, so they can get a CSCS license which allows them to work um, insured, allows them to be insured and work on construction sites. So we can actually uh, directly employ them ourselves through our commercial arm. Beyond that, there are the soft skills they gain from um, working alongside professionals um, and making the transition between you know, perhaps a disorderly life back to something which is slightly more structured.